One way to look at multiplication is with an area model. So if we want to multiply 4 times 9, we just need to think of a rectangle that measures 4 units by 9 units and count the number of squares or square units within the rectangle. In this case, we have an area of 36. Now what if we rewrite the 9 as 7 plus 2? We should have the same rectangle with the same dimensions, so we have the same area. But let's look at how that changes the way the model looks. 7 plus 2 is breaking up the side that measured 9 into two smaller pieces. That means we have two rectangles that are making up the larger rectangle, one that measures 4 by 7 and the other that measures 4 by 2. So the area of the orange rectangle is the 4 times 7, and the area of the blue rectangle is 4 times 2. Now what we've just done is an example of the distributive property. It's a way to distribute the 4 to the two terms that make up the other factor. So let's think about what the area of the smaller rectangles are. The 4 by 7 rectangle has an area of 28, the 4 by 2 rectangle has an area of 8, and sure enough that total area is still 36. Even if one or both of our factors contain variables, we can still use the distributive property to do the multiplication. In terms of the model, we would have a rectangle that measures x on one side and x plus 2 on the other side. To find the area of the rectangles, we would multiply x times x and then x times 2. So we would combine those two areas of x squared and 2x to get the area of the entire rectangle, which is the result of the multiplication. What if both of the factors have two terms? How do we multiply that? Now don't look so worried. This is actually still the distributive property. You'll see. Here's what the model looks like. We have a rectangle that measures x plus 5 on one side, x plus 2 on the other side. That divides our entire rectangle into four smaller rectangles. So let's find the area of each of those smaller rectangles. This orange rectangle measures x by x, so it has an area of x squared. This blue one measures x by 2, so it has an area of 2x. This light orange one measures 5 by x, so it has an area of 5x. And the light blue one measures 5 by 2. Yeah, 5 by 2, 5 times 2 is 10. So if we add those four areas together, we'll get the total area. Now this one measures x squared, and we got that by multiplying the first terms of each binomial. This one measures 2x. We found that by multiplying the outside terms of our binomials. This one measures 5x. We get that by multiplying the inside terms of our binomials. And finally the 10, well that came from multiplying the last terms of our binomials. Now you just heard me say the words first, outer, inner, last. Those are pretty easy words to understand. We really just use the distributive property. And because we see that pattern in the multiplication, first, outer, inner, last, sometimes this is called using FOIL. It's a way to remember how to do all of the multiplications we need to, to find all of the areas that make up the large rectangle. Now let's think about this multiplication one more time. We said we'd multiply the first term times the first term and that would give us the first term of the four terms we're going to end up with. 
and then we would multiply the outside terms, x times 2 in this case. Then we would multiply the inside terms, that's the 5 times x. And then we would multiply the last terms, that's the 5 times 2. There you go, that's how you do the multiplication. Now what you'll find is that quite often those outer and inner terms are like terms. They have the same variable raised to the same power. And in that case, you can combine those like terms. So 2x plus 5x is 7x. So that means our final answer, our final product, is x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's see if we can multiply 2x plus 3 times x minus 1. Here's what the model would look like. We have a rectangle that measures 2x plus 3 on one side, x minus 1 on the other. We've got the four smaller rectangles that make up the total area. So let's see, we need the first times the first, that's 2x times x, that's 2x squared. Then we need the outers, that's 2x times negative 1, that's negative 2x. We need the inners, which is 3 times x, or 3x. And then we need to multiply the last terms, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Okay, so far so good. Once again, the outers and the inners are like terms, so we'll take negative 2x and add 3x, that's 1x, we can just call that x. So that means our final product is 2x squared plus x minus 3. Not bad, right? Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Foiling just means multiplying two binomials by using the distributive property.